Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Land Plays. The Binding of Isaac. Wrath of the Lamb, you heard of this game? Version 1.48, maybe they'll come out with another one at some point. I don't know, I haven't heard any news about it, I don't even know. What kind of fake veneer I am even putting on at this point. Let me guess. Indeed, this is the seated run we did on the NLSS. I don't want to do that one again. Even though on that run, I ended up getting Guppy, Mom's Knife, Brimstone, Polyphemus. I, you know, that's not a joke. By the way, if you go back and watch like Wednesday's, uh, like the most previous Wednesday's NLSS uh, VOD on YouTube, which I encourage you to do, of course. Also, uh, you know, make sure to tip your servers. But in any case, yeah, that's that's exactly how that ended up going down. The way that those runs typically go is that um, Nick and I get like the same items on the first floor. Somebody does a, a rogue reroll, and then one of the two of us ends up having like the most powerful run of all time. I'm not sure why it has a tendency to happen more often with runs that are seemingly preceded. I don't think there's any kind of conspiracy going on. It's just surprising. So, I'm if there's anything changing in the Northern Lion meta in the Binding of Isaac right now, it, it sincerely is how I feel about those items that regularly drop you uh, consumables: bomb bag, sack of pennies. Little chat, etc., etc. For a long time, I've pretty much not been picking them up because they make the best of those items. Well, the relic, basically. Um, I'm not. No, it doesn't apply to the miter. It's only the relic. I hope I don't have that backwards. But anyway, it doesn't really matter in the whole scheme of things. You get what I'm talking about. It and picking up any of those items makes the relic worse. That being said, on how many runs or what percentage of runs do you actually pick up the relic? It's high, maybe like five to ten. And that is relatively high as far as, you know, randomly generated items and eyes ago. I'm not really comfortable being down here in this corner. Um, but I got lucky and only got hit once in the process of that whole nightmare. So I'm not so disappointed, I guess. Oh my god. Again, it doesn't really matter how much damage we take on this floor. So I'm not overly concerned about it. But I kind of feel like being able to get a lot of money from the early point of the game onwards. Being able to pick up like an extra six cents per floor, if not more is probably more meaningful. Now, this scares the crap out of me. I would have much preferred just a random, uh, like, attribute drop. But now that we know we have two pretty flies out of it, that's pretty good. One tears downgrade, that sucks. And one health downgrade. Okay, so it actually was kind of a terrible setup, but, uh, that's okay. We, you gotta take the good with the bad. There was definitely some bad there, but there was some relative good as well, uh, in getting two-thirds of a suite of orbitals. It's a weird one. I wish we didn't have the tears downgrade. I would, like, nine times out of ten, prefer to get an HP downgrade to a tier downgrade. Of course, we got both there, so, you know, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. We're kind of, you know, turning the use of that on its head, but... Um, sincerely, I hope that we pick up something that makes us offensively more potent. Now, as bad as that uh, was, it might not end up being the worst thing in the world, because it kind of incentivizes picking up nine lives, which is already, like, one of the most common drops that you can plausibly oh come on don't lose your spirit heart here uh it's already one of the most common deal with the devil items and if we're gonna pick it up anyway well it doesn't really matter if we have three hearts or two hearts we just lose less hp if we end up uh, picking it up later well when we have less hp i guess i should say um so i'm not too concerned about this yet that being said, I'm also not going to go to our item room right away, just in case we uh, do get enough money to make the shop worthwhile. And our rerolls are mostly going to work out appropriately here, if not perfectly. But yeah, uh, if you're going to get an HP downgrade, this is kind of the situation where I'm okay with it. So hopefully we can augment it with an HP upgrade from this boss. Alright, well... We will have a full suite of orbitals, that's a start, I guess. It's a weird run. I, I've been having a lot of runs, uh, at least, you know, YouTube-wise. On Twitch, they've been... Not to, you know, it, say my own content is getting stale at all, but um, a lot of the runs on, on Twitch have been samey just because they go on for like an hour either way. So, you, you know, you do your due diligence and you end up getting, most of the time, a lot of HP, maybe a transformation and uh, some big game items like Polyphemus, Mom's Knife, Brimstone, etc, etc. Uh, but the YouTube ones have been working out a little bit kind of more varied, in more varied a fashion, uh, which is good, but at the same time always makes me, you know, it keeps you on your toes, which again, is probably a good thing, but at the same time uh, does leave me a little bit anxious and open to uh, potential disaster, but this is our deal with the devil. We are up to seven cents. Money equals power. How could I refuse money equals power when we have the uh, sack of pennies? 
Now, I'm gonna re-roll this and hope it doesn't kill me if I picked it up. I'm not gonna pick it up. Okay. You could probably make a pretty good case to say, hey, like, don't do that. <laughs> Instead, you should uh, save your reroll, maybe use it on the shop or the item room, but whatever. I'm hoping we get another bomb, because if we get another bomb, there's a very realistic chance we could get into the item room as well as the shop. As well as the secret room, actually. We'll see, though. For now, uh, I think we'll check out our mob trap room. Oh, that's annoying. That's very annoying. Uh, at least we do have one more room here. This could provide us with the consumable we need to maybe open that seam, but there's also, uh, there's way more opportunities for the secret room to exist than I thought there were. So where do we use our bomb? We could use it to access that chest, or we could use it to try to find the secret room. I'm gonna try to find the secret room. It was a one in three shot that we lost. Uh, I think we open up our item room now instead of our shop. And we end up getting spider butts. So I would say that the last half of this floor, I'm not necessarily thrilled about. That being said, Money Eagles Power is a big pickup for us. I'm excited to have Money Eagles Power. I hope you're excited to, to see Money Eagles Power. It's one of those items that is a rare uh, treat when it actually works out in your favor. And getting Sack of Pennies helps us synergize that quite nicely. But I am also kind of like very much on the lookout for Nine Lives. Because it's like such a perfect synergy for us considering we only have one HP and this is not me saying you know my end goal is becoming guppy if that happens that would be an awesome synergy with any item but you know money equals power in particular would give us super high value flies or high damage flies because of our high value um, but nine lives by its own merits not even with future considerations involved is a uh, good strategic choice if we can swing it also if we could get like some nickels and dimes uh, from not to accidentally quote, you know, semi-charmed kind of life. But, if we could get some uh, nickels and dimes, I would very much like to have that happen. So we can get our damage up quickly, because we haven't improved our offense by anything at all. With the exception of the 8 cents that we have that make uh, money equals power help us do a slight bit more damage. I know, I know, but I'm going to go to our item room instead because we have a reroll ready right away. Even though... We could possibly, uh, well, probably get enough money for our shop. I think it's kind of a better play to do this. But, for now, we're gonna have to be content with the fact that we've gotten a tiers downgrade and have, what, like a .32? Not, like, proportion, raw .32 damage increase. Which is not, uh, you know, thrilling. I would also be super happy if we could get either small rock or just an F-ton of tiers upgrades. Uh, it's probably not worth a bomb, considering we don't have one. If we did have one, we would use it for something else. Alright, and again, no bombs available, so let's hope it's a relatively easy boss. It is gonna be, um... It's an item I'm happy to get. Second level Meat Boy is okay. And again, what have I been complaining about? Kind of DPS issues. This should s not solve, but mitigate our DPS issues somewhat. But the main thing here is... Do your damnedest to, uh... Oh, come on. Do your damnedest to keep uh, your spirit hearts. Give yourself a reasonably okay deal with the devil chance here. And then re-roll it and get nine lives. And maybe take some items that kill you in the process. Because if we don't get like offensively strong, we're kind of boned. Because we don't have very much HP. But that's partly my own fault for taking money equals power. But that is an offensively strong... Anyway, I'm rambling here. How's it going? Pretty good. Me too. You guys been playing some video games lately? I feel like... Uh, with the end of September and the, the start of October here, and you guys know I'm not like a triple A games guy for the most part, but I feel like I've been waking up from like a long sleep. Now the video games are coming out, and I'm being like, oh shit, like this is actually pretty good, and next week there's stuff coming out I'm interested in, and the week after, it's not like one game per month. Like, this is actually crazy. I've been playing Shadows of Mordor. Ooh. I think we have to reroll both of these. Even though Guppy's, well, Guppy's Paw isn't interesting, because if we pick it up, it doesn't benefit us at all, because we can't generate extra spirit hearts off it. So we reroll both. Mom's knife would kill us, wouldn't it? It would kill us to pick it up, or we'd be down to, like, zero spirit hearts. I can't justify it as much as I would like to. But yeah, I've, I've been playing the crap out of Shadows of Mordor. Just to, to make sure the lines are clear here, don't necessarily take that as an endorsement, even though I've been enjoying it so far. Um, I'm playing the PS4 version, so I have no idea how the PC port is. I've heard it's, like, 
pretty great actually and like it, the game's future proof so like some of the textures won't even unlock unless you're in like the top 0.5 percent of like pc capabilities right now but anyway um and i've only played like four hours so it's possible that it takes some kind of terrible turn and i'll stop liking it later but for now i've been enjoying that game a great deal and like alien isolation comes out next week i think everyone has a, a healthy degree of skepticism about it but is also like man this could actually be like a pretty good alien game and it's it's been a nice time and i, I played sherlock holmes all the way through and i was like that game is pretty solid as well I'm, i've been surprised by the amount of games that i've been playing lately that i've really enjoyed and this is all just a little teaser until rebirth comes out anyway as far as i'm concerned all right, do we know what these pills are? Is one of them an HP downgrade? It is an HP downgrade. Okay. We can get out of here and still live. That's an important part of my plan. It's gonna be close. Is there any point, I, so I, th I think if I take a pretty fly and I get a third level meat boy, it would still work for us in this situation, but there's no point in having a third level meat boy. Also, what was that, Peeper's Eye? We might as well take it, I guess. But we got up to 21 cents, so if nothing else, you know, there is that. Now, if I could go into the, uh, deal with the devil and take mom's knife, I mean, has anything really changed? I would still have zero HP. I don't think I could justify it, but I really have no idea. Well, luckily, we don't have to worry about it. I really have no idea how to feel about that floor. I, I don't know if that worked out well for us or if it was a little bit below average. But anyway, yeah, I, I feel like kind of, th this is not a nice thing to say because there's been a lot of games this year that I have enjoyed you know I'm a little bit I wouldn't say in the minority I'm not trying to paint myself as some kind of like oh I'm the only critic who gets it or anything like that but I really enjoyed Dark Souls 2 even though I think a lot of people um, have, have soured on it a little bit uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying Mordor I've enjoyed games like you know Shovel Knight and other stuff like that that's come out this year Stick of Truth for example is a good one Banner Saga uh, Banished I've been, I've been enjoying a lot of these games um, Probably not going to take that tears downgrade pill, I'll tell you that much. Uh, you know what, I will come in here and gamble a little bit to try to earn a key though. But I feel like a lot of this year, especially through the summer, I've just kind of been, not treading water, but spending time until Rebirth comes out, if that makes sense. Uh, just kind of waiting for Rebirth to come out and been like, this is good, but I'm really, really hyped for Rebirth. This is good, but I'm really, really hyped for Rebirth. Anyway. I've spent a lot of time this year playing games that actually came out in, in 2012. I think, like, the best games of 2014 so far, or a lot of the best games of 2014. We're going to spend all our money here, aren't we? Yeah, I'm not feeling too good about this anymore. I mean, when we get Red Hearts, we should be able to get money back by the fact that we have uh, Blood Bank, but still. Um, yeah, a lot of the best games of 2014 have been games that actually sort of came out in 2012. What have I played the most this year? Well, uh, The Binding of Isaac. Wrath of the Lamb came out in 2012, so let's count it. EU4, EU4, um, well, EU4 came out in 2013, but uh, CK2, you know, with its new DLC, I played a bunch of that. That came out 2012. FTL Advanced Edition, Counter Strike Global Offensive, Prison Architect. I've been playing a lot of games that uh, came out a couple of years ago. I really think, and I don't know why I'm going off on this tangent, but maybe it's because I'm just waiting for some good items to come up. But uh, I think, you know how people like will make posts on Reddit and it'll be a JPEG of like all the great games that came out in like let's go to our uh shop and they'll be like all the great games that came out in 2000 there's never going to be another game uh, another year that's as good as 2000 was for games it'll be like deus ex and i don't even know fallout 2 or something like that uh, i think people are going to be like that for 2012 not yet we're definitely going to try to buy that map i'm going to wait on it just a little bit though because i'm i don't want to gamble our red hearts away on the blood bank right now but i think 2012 is going to get there in the hindsight it's going to take a little while but uh, you know, 2012, you got games like Portal 2, Journey, first season of The Walking Dead, XCOM, CK2, um, Mark of the Ninja, the HD version of Spelunky, at least the Xbox Live, uh, edition of it, Wrath of the Lamb, probably won't factor into, I guess, that many people's opinions on it, because it's an expansion, and I guess, even compared to those games, despite its popularity, Isaac is a little bit niche, even though Edmund had announced that it, uh, sold 3 million copies over its lifetime, which is crazy, but anyway. I've forgotten. There's more. There's so many more that I've forgotten about. But I think 20, 2012 is going to be potentially in that, uh, in that category. Fez, even though a lot of people have problems with it, of course, I would count it in there. I still uh, have a soft spot in my heart for Fez. Whether or not the creator cares that I have a soft spot in my heart for Fez is um, irrelevant to me, you know? I... For this case, I'll separate the art from the artist. 
So, uh, how am I feeling about this run so far? I'm, I'm in an interesting position. We probably blew up our deal with the Devil Chances. There's no red hearts on the ground, which is really the thing that's pissing me off the most. Um, and I guess not having a second key sucks, but... Yeah, we're... We, we probably shouldn't be too concerned about blowing up our deal with the Devil Chance, because we had two in a row anyway. So I guess that's more or less irrelevant. We don't really stand a good chance of getting one on this floor anyway. I would love to have some more red hearts, like, readily accessible on the ground, though. I would also love to not die. Uh, that's factoring in pretty heavily in the li my, like, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs right now. Number one, I think, is, like, oxygen. Way to go, Maslow. Tell me something I don't know. Also, since when did the DJ from the Grand Theft Auto series get his own hierarchy of needs? Where's my hierarchy of needs if we're just giving him out willy-nilly like that? So I'm gonna play this floor as if I don't have the D6. I know we could go fight our boss right now, but I don't trust myself to not take one or two hits of damage and find myself dead. Could be one, depending on the boss we're fighting, which is why I uh, specified, but anyway. It's right outside your door, now Specif! Oh, yep, I uh, pretty much dodged right into that, and now we're in the danger zone. Probably because of that Rage Against the Machine lyric. They are notoriously litigious. Oh, I guess that's kind of their thing, isn't it? Now, be careful here. We should be able to beat Envy. Get Attack Fly. Come on. Come on. No Attack Fly. A live bomb instead. So I think, again, this floor is largely just about survival. I do want to buy the map, don't get me wrong. I would love to do so. But, I think the right play for us is maybe to buy the Red Heart first. That'll give us enough HP to survive the boss fight, hopefully. Is it half price too? Well, it's just cheap. I wouldn't say it's half price. Um, this should give us enough HP to survive the boss fight, which will give us more HP, not necessarily an HP upgrade, but usually consumables on the ground at least, which will then allow us to play the Blood Bank and get enough money to buy the map. Ipso facto, something something, your mother. Now, there we go, half a red heart. To what do I owe this honor? This also allows us to go to the mob trap room, but I think we're going to be able to do that regardless if we beat this boss. So this floor, even though it might look like it's not going so hot right now, it has some seams that we can take advantage of. But we got to beat the boss first. And, of course, it's little Chad. Little Chad. I don't know why, but lately, uh, little Chad's going to be the one that saves me. Because after all, he's my champagne supernova. Uh, we, we've been getting this boss all the time, especially in moments of like critical need, which is lovely, you know? I really need some HP, what do you get? Little chat, all right, well, can't always get what you want, that's what Oasis said. In a weird way, I find myself in kind of a situation where I've, uh, I have to eat my own words. Remember when I picked up Sack of Pennies and was like, well, how often do you get the mark? Or sorry, how often do you get the relic? Those are totally different items. Uh, ooh, okay, never mind. Let's ignore this for a second. Really? This guy is not liable to drop many red hearts, so we're gonna have to fight him with good old-fashioned wits, unfortunately. But yeah, uh, I was like, well, what are the odds that we're gonna get the relic? Okay, but not amazing, right? But now we have little Chad, and I kind of find myself wanting to pick up little Chad so I can get more red hearts, because that's been a little bit of an issue for us on this floor specifically. Whether it continues to be relevant later remains to be seen. But anyway, um, we... Uh, but if we take little Chad, does that mean that sack of pennies won't drop as many uh, pennies? Because it'll be dropping red hearts occasionally instead. Or vice versa, I suppose. Uh, and does that mean that we would end up getting an appreciably less amount of damage as a result of money equals power? I don't know is the answer to your question, good sir. Why are you, you know, being giving me the third degree here? I'm just trying to play a video game. Sincerely, though. Oh, that nickel is big. We can't really do too much with our... Okay, long story short, I'm going to take it. We can't really do too much with that red heart in there, although I would love to. So, uh, what do I think here? Is there an ability to buy a bomb on this shop? Or a key? I would actually accept either. Pretty freely. There is a fortune teller, too, so we could earn a good trinket. Because we've got a delicate balance here when it comes to our money. 
I don't want to lose extra damage. I mean, we get we gained some via lump of coal, but I don't want to lose extra damage uh, just from spending 15 cents on the map. If we could get a bomb and then, as a result of that, uh, find the secret room and get a ton of money back, that would be awesome. As it is right now, we'll probably end up getting enough money to buy a key and then go into the item room. But what's more valuable, the key or the bomb? Oh, that is huge, but also terrible. Yeah, that that sucks. <laughs> Why does it suck? Well, let's go to our let's go to our mob trap room before we get too bent out of shape here. It sucks because oh no, we have another blood bank. Okay, disregard. We're still gonna go to our mob trap room first, and everything's still potentially gonna be okay. What's the ideal payout here? Mob trap room gives us a single bomb. I'll take it. Then we use the other blood bank, get the five cents, get a key, go into the item room, and have the ability to reroll it. We leave with a decent amount of damage, a little bit more HP. Oh, we got the key here instead. That's not ideal, but not necessarily the kiss of death, because now instead of buying a key for five cents, we can just use this one and spend our five cents gambling instead to try to get a bomb. If that's worth it, it might be worth it to just leave, but it kind of seems like a, a waste to have the map, but not really be able to go to the secret room. But we could just lose six cents trying to gamble for a bomb and get nothing in return. Or we could spend six cents gambling, get something in return, but it's not the bomb, could be worth more, could be worth less. You know, this is the beauty of Isaac, isn't it? Is that it's all kind of mercurial. It's up in the air like a like a Vera Farminga film. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I'm sorry. So I don't know. I'm gonna I'm just gonna go like a little deeper on this for a minute. We'll go down to like one and a half. So that gives us some money. Then we're gonna go to our item room. And I was hoping there'd be bomb items, but instead we actually got something better. This is uh, Cupid's arrow. Do I trust myself to get a bomb from gambling? Yes. Do I think the secret room has a chance to have more money than it would cost us to get that bomb? Yes. I think that means I have to go for it. I think that means I have to give it a try here. So we're going to come down to our arcade. And the fortune teller could give us spirit hearts, which gives us more comfort in playing the blood bank. It could give us a bloody penny trinket or something like that. Uh, so I think, like, th this is with merit. It has merit. Oh, just give me the bomb on the first fucking play, you asshole. It's the easiest thing in the world. We don't win at all! We won from the blood bank, so I guess that's the most important thing. So that spirit heart is big. Please give me a bomb. Oh my god. Well, here goes all of our money, but getting one spirit heart out of it at least means we got something from this. Oh, and we got three bombs. Okay, so let's save our last cent. You remember that classic uh, Julia Stiles film, Save the Last Cent. It's about uh, perfume, I think, if I remember correctly, but I digress, clearly. Secret Room contains Book of Belial, which we then re-roll and get one up. So in a weird turn of events, this is not what I expected, but I think it was worth it. Especially if somehow this bad boy pays out, or if he just gives us, like, some nickels, but... Oh, hey, alright. I feel better about that now. I'm not gonna blow it up. This floor was very strange, but I think also turned out okay. We got an HP plus speed upgrade. Little Chad, I don't even know if that's an upgrade, but we got it. Uh, the map? Whatever, I'm just gonna go down to the next floor. A one-up. Oh, good. Necropolis XL. Well, I take back everything good that I just said about this. We're in a weird spot. We have no keys. No keys is a problem. Always. Piercing shots. Very, very useful on enemies like this, because we can shoot through the mask. I'm shooting through the mask in the mirror. You know, I don't think my voice uh, is very good. So I thought the best thing to do is compare it to, you know, a musician who's considered perhaps one of the best pop singers of all time. So I may die here. And that's okay. It's not like we're ruining our deal with the devil chances, right? Get out of here. Thank you. Um, and if we respawn... Well, we will respawn. When we respawn, that's great. Are you seeing this horse shit? Yeah, just kill me. You know what? I didn't even want to be there. That's absolute nonsense. We'll come back to that room later. Why is it absolute nonsense? We don't have to start every necropolis with like three rooms that contain Mask of Infamy. You know, there are other enemies that are necropolis specific or necropolis focused. 
Like this, for example. These enemies are tough, but at least, you know, they're proportional to our own ability right now. Which makes me feel a little bit like the game has it out for me when we face so many massive infamy room all at once. Uh, special room? Hopefully we get some HP, because I would love to go to our curse room right away. As is right now, might seem like it's a foolish idea to go to our library. You know, we don't have any of the items you would normally consider useful for our library. But, I'm gonna do it, because we're early enough. And, uh, we're gonna use our reroll here. We could use Book of Shadows for something, but... Whatever. Uh, we're not gonna use Book of Revelations yet. In fact, we may not use Book of Revelations at all. One of these is tears down. What's the other one? Bombs are key. Hey, that's really useful for us. Um, why would we not use Book of Revelations? I don't want to fight war. We may end up fighting war regardless, in which case, you know, I'll look very silly and I should have used Book of Revelations to give us an extra spirit heart. But, um, I think we're gonna reroll that. Yeah. Probably. If we end up having lifesteal, well, that's the kind of run we built, so I'm not gonna be too salty about it. We've already got little Chad, so... They really just work well with one another, I suppose, but, um... Yeah, I... I think that not using Book of Revelations is kind of the right play when we already have second level Meat Boy. And I have to get into the, the weird nitty-gritty min-max stuff, you know, I got my Biznap hat on. It's a very sensible hat. Fat Odd Mushroom. Hey, hey, hey! Thank you very much. Did Little Chad, like, ruin Sack of Pennies? It sort of feels like that right now. Hopefully we do have an arcade on this floor as well. That would make me feel a lot better about uh, this whole situation that we got going on. But yeah, I uh, I think that we have to get a little bit uh, tricky here if we're going to succeed. We got very lucky, by the way, to find both item rooms kind of away from that Mask of Infamy hellhole. And we should have enough time to generate a double item room here. We might not get too many rerolls on it, and that's part of our failing for not being able to get something, you know, that augments our spacebar item from the shop earlier. Book of Sin, uh, key, please. Well, a pill. That gives us bad gas. It happens, I suppose. And the HP and extra damage and piercing shots and all that is good stuff for right now. But uh, it's not quite good enough yet. So in a way, I'm kind of guaranteeing myself a few more plays on the library because I'm deliberately not actively seeking out the terminals here. Oh, come on. Oh, okay, you know what? You earned it, congrats. Watch out for that bomb. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to like give myself no other choice but to go to the library and turn it into a double item room because I know myself and I know if I find the shop, then I'm gonna say, oh, we should use a reroll on this because it's the last shop. And then maybe I end up rerolling it four times and I, you know, come away with mom's purse even though I don't have any other trinkets. And all of a sudden it's like, you know, we, we missed out on a double item room. So I'm actively working against my own instincts here. So forgive me that, but uh, sometimes my instincts are wrong. Oftentimes, my instincts are wrong. I'm not Liam Neeson from Taken or Liam Neeson from uh, Nonstop. Nor my Liam Neeson from The Grey. I'm more like the way that Liam Neeson probably is in his personal life, you know, a little bit uh, open to taking some time to consider your actions as opposed to just acting rashly. Not that anything he did in those films was rash. I mean, who knows how I would react if my hypothetical daughter was stolen from me by a vaguely Balkan sex ring. I don't know, it's been a while since I saw Taken. And that's not gonna change. No offense. People, like, they get really offended when you say you don't like Taken. I didn't realize until I said it on the stream. But it's one of those things where, like, it's it's a movie that it seems like you can't dislike, really, without people being like, oh, so tell me a movie you like. I'm gonna discount a movie you like because you don't like Taken. Man, you don't have to go that far. I just don't really like Taken. It's okay. I like some dumb action movies. Did you hear me talk, like, about how much I think Crank is a masterpiece on a recent episode? That might have been Community Remix, but... Like, yeah, I, I think Crank is genuinely great. And maybe that's, if, you, if you're like, well, he doesn't like Taken, but he likes Crank, maybe that's all the evidence you need to know that you don't trust my opinion on films, and you know what, that is A-OK. -okay. I'm gonna open this. Yeah! Suck on that, random number generator. The clearest, most objectively correct uh, opening of a golden chest we've ever done. Unless we got even more keys. 
All right, so this floor again, it's it's the seamiest. Did I say I'm the slickest there is? One bomb, one key, we could open that. We'd get a penny out of it too, but no big deal. Now, I can't help but feel that this uh, re-rolling here is going like half as quickly as I would like it to, as a result of getting the same book multiple times. I'm really relying, by the way, on getting, careful here, on getting uh, that double item room to give me the strength to be able to take on this left side of the floor. Because, like, as of right now, there's some serious crap going on over there. You know, we got bum-rushed by the, ooh, that's pretty good. We got bum-rushed by those uh, masks of infamy, and I was not happy about it, but I also feel like we need to be a lot stronger if we're going to make it work there. What a weird kind of setup for this floor. I'm I'm grateful for it, weirdly enough, but um, to have just like a big block down here at the bottom with, with no distinguishable terminals is kind of weird. Now we go back again. So I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking we got, you know, one of those rooms is going to be a shop for sure, if you look at the left side. Two of them are going to be boss rooms, and I think that means that there's no arcade. And that's very disappointing for me, because there's a lot of red hearts available here. But we did get two blood banks on the last floor, so I guess I can't be too disappointed about it. And we had a library on this floor. And we've made it work for us, so I do think that homing bombs are an okay pickup here. The bombs will allow us to access the secret room, which we were not able to do before. Maybe give us some extra money. I opened this golden chest, and it gave me uh, more bombs and a key. Alright, that was great. So we have one room to reroll there in our library. Now we could reroll um, Mask of Infamy instead if we wanted to. Not Mask of Infamy, um, Charm of the Vampire. So many items in Isaac have that same cadence. Blah of the blah blah. Okay. One bomb for six cents is worth it, especially if you consider that we have money equals power, and especially if you consider that there's at least a relatively decent chance we end up uh, going to our shop soon. And maybe spending money, although I would have to guess that we're probably going to encounter greed at this point. Alright, this is like the ideal room. You know, it's not the easiest room in the whole scheme of things, but it's certainly preferable to massive infamy. Homing bomb's not quite the super bombastic, you know, Mr. Fantastic item I was expecting, or hoping for at least, but... At least we've uh, gotten to the point where we made good on that double item room promise, you know? Now this, yeah. In a way, we're lucky to not have spirit hearts, so I don't feel too much pressure to not take uh, damage, because we can just get it back. Because, of course, I was going to take it there. Okay! Well, I have used a lot of keys on this floor already. But getting a golden key is still great in my books. We'll save a couple. Better to be uh, happy about the keys you've saved than indignant about the keys you, you might consider that you've wasted. Plus, golden keys are not uh, pre-programmed into the floor. It's just a random consumable drop. So, you know, it's generated on the room's death. It's not like we could have necessarily gotten it any faster. So I am going to go through with this last room. I know it's a, a lazy play considering we have the D6 already charged, but we're only going to miss one third of a charge as a result, and I'm doing it basically to just say, hey, you know, this is my reward to you, self, for being fairly diligent up to this point. This is going to save you some backtracking later. Like, very, very shortly, but later. Ah, well, that's okay. All right, golden key. Time to make good use of this. We will uh, definitely use a bomb here. One bomb for a golden chest is a good deal. Even if it is only the goat hoof. Small speed upgrade. I mean, that's not worth very much, but it is worth the bomb, I guess. Or at least I don't feel too bad about it. So even though we might value a uh, half hard interval, I think a Charm of the Vampire pickup could save our lives, so that's why I'm rerolling Doctor's Remote instead. At least Charm of the Vampire is passive. And we get poison bombs. Now we'll, now we'll start rerolling Charm of the Vampire. So, again, we haven't fully improved ourselves an amazing amount here, but we got two bomb synergies, poison and homing, ten extra bombs. I, I'm very glad that we took the time to go to this side of the floor first. Now, where was that Mask of Infamy room? Because we can possibly skirt it on the way down here. I think it's the room directly to our right. If we could avoid it, I know that, you know, you have to go to every room, you've got to get as many chances, blah blah blah. We would lose so much HP on that room and possibly die that I uh, don't necessarily agree in this case. It's one of those, like, do-as-I-say, not-as-I-do situations, or to put it more or in, a, in a better idiom, uh, rules are made to be broken. Sometimes. In this case. So, no bomb. Well, we are still using a bomb, I guess, but we got a free bomb here anyway. Our golden chest doesn't matter. Give me, like, a hundred golden chests inside of it. Don't. It doesn't matter to me. 
Whatever you happen to be. A do -do 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 -do. A do -do -do. I'm trying to remember what that is. I think it's a Raffy song. I would love you. Okay, we're gonna re-roll the ladder. Oh! So that's uh, some... You know, it's an item that I'm not super uh, happy about from a cost perspective. But from a hey that's a nun's habit perspective, it pretty much ticks all the boxes. What is that song? If I was a gorilla, banana na na I'd eat me a banana, fa na 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 I would sit in the treetops and swing on a vine. One thing's for sure, I would love ya. That's a, you like my Raffi impression? He's Canadian, man. I gotta rep Raffi. You know what's funny is that, you know, I don't know, it was probably like 2004 or something. Banana Phone became like a, a meme. You know, the song is, you know, ring, 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 banana phone. And people were like, this is silly and dumb. I owned Banana Phone because I was of the proper age. Barely, I guess. But I owned Banana Phone um, and was like, this is so surreal to me that this is becoming like an internet joke. Because I loved that album when I was like seven. I, and I, I have it. And that's how I know, you know, Raffi's slightly deeper back catalog is, you know, song two after Banana Phone is Shake a Toe. And then it has the C A N A D A song, which is basically just like, you know, Canadian pride wrapped up all into one. But it's it ends up being, you know, almost a self fulfilling prophecy with respect to Canadian stereotypes. Because it's like C A N A D A. Have you ever seen a Douglas fir? And you're like, come on, Raffy, we have like titans of industry in our country as well, not just trees. C A N A D A. Have you ever heard of Bobcat purr? And you're like, oh, dude, I'm Canadian. I've probably seen a Douglas fir. I've never heard of Bobcat purr. How about like C A N A D A? Remember we made the Blackberry? C A N A D A. And that. NASA Canada arm thing that grabs the space junk and puts it back in the ship so that people don't die. It's, that's what I was hoping for, but... And he's like, we get to see the maple trees. Maple sugar in the maple. Come on, Raffi, you're not helping here, okay? So we have a choice here. We got Skeleton Key on our reroll of Charm of the Vampire, which I'd say is pretty good. Here's our choice. We could choose to fight these last two rooms to get a reroll ready. Uh, for the boss fight, or we could choose to say F you game and just fight the boss and take whatever they give us, which is what I'm actually going to choose to do in this situation. And I'm really, and you know what? We're actually going to buy the spirit heart as well. Now, it's a bit of a calculated risk here. Buying the spirit heart, uh, my hope is that we don't take damage against mom, then we use this to leverage into a deal with the devil on the womb part one, which I think is pretty much essential if we want to have a good chance of winning like we're not in a great position right now that's probably relatively clear by my commentary um, yes it obviously costs us a little bit of damage in the process whatever though uh, if it gives us that deal with the devil that's the only thing that or the thing that matters most maybe not the only thing that matters but the thing that matters most it's gonna be a long ish fight here get ready Yep, that uh, was about tenth of a second away from being damaged. If we pull this out, it'll end up being pretty impressive, I think. I hope, anyway. We haven't been screwed for items, but we certainly haven't picked up your your standard, uh, you know, deal with the devil goodness. We had to skip over Mom's knife due to a lack of HP. Why did we not have enough HP? Uh, some it's politics with our room order and also the fact that I got a random HP downgrade pill from our first boss fight, which... Puts you behind the A-ball pretty darn quickly. No nine lives in our uh, deal with the devil for the first time in forever. Uh, threw us back a little bit too. But, here we are. And we got another spirit heart. And we got pageant boy, which, especially when combined with the nickel that it included, is actually a pretty solid get for us, uh, considering we have money equals power. And now, of course, is the, the time when we start stacking up as much uh, money as we can. Yeah, we're on Utero 1, so we don't need to look for an arcade or anything. I am content to fight Super Greed, even though he's a little dangerous. And, uh, honestly, if I can get into the position to, like, get a bomb down there, I would like to. Oh! Thank you, homing bombs. You're my only hope. Okay. I'm just thinking, we take care of the Keepers and the, the Greeds take care of themselves. And... Okay, that should do it. 
And we got the quarter and a spirit heart. Good pickups here. That actually gives us like plus one damage just from one drop, which is probably enough to make that like the most meaningful greed fight of all time. So careful, very careful. But with skeleton key, you gotta open that stuff up. Also, I'm not sure if you knew this, but I gotta have my pops. I'm just, okay, get as close as you can to the rock, then walk up. No, it doesn't do it. So, we're gonna need to put a bomb down like here. We definitely want the dime. Again, that's like uh, another 0.4 damage increase for us. So we've increased our damage by like, you know, 1.4, despite not even getting to the boss yet. That's pretty freaking good. And we've gained some extra spirit hearts. Which helps us out an enormous deal for actually, you know, getting these deals with the devil. This is potentially an extremely lucky and perhaps even incredible floor. Got a ways to go before it kind of comes into, uh, into focus, though. Oh my god, really? The Hierophant? You're too kind, game. You're being a little too nice right now. It's suspicious. How are you going to choose to screw me soon? Deal with the devil that only contains, like... I don't know, the nail. And then when you re-roll it, it turns into the shovel. Yeah, you know what? I thought about re-rolling this, because uh, 10 bombs isn't that good, I guess. But then I was like, wait a minute, we have bomb synergy, and what am I hoping to get out of the mob trap room instead? What are the other mob trap room items that I typically love? Skeleton key, well, we already have it. All right, well, 10 bombs then, I guess. All right, I didn't get hit by the spawning of all three bosses, so that's a, that's a start for me as far as progress goes. Did lose some HP here, that's okay. That Hierophant card will protect me somewhat. Look at that. Greatest dodge I've ever done in my entire life. The greatest trick Northern Lion ever pulled is convincing the bullets he didn't exist. One's dead. Second one not far behind. Oh yeah, and we got two extra bombs, so 12 bombs for that, I would say, is pretty sweet. This is going to be a long run. Oh mama, I'm afraid for my life on the long arm of the mom. Gertie Jr. coming down from the cellar and I don't have very long. So I am going to play the crap out of that Demon Judgment, rest assured, especially if we have uh, HP that allows us to do so. I had a feeling that we were going to end up in a situation akin to this. That didn't really help me. Okay, so we know that we can get out of the way of his uh, beams of light. Suck on that, Madonna, or his Nick would say, sit on it. We're bringing it back. I will use as many bombs as, if it takes me all 20 bombs, to tell Conquest how badly I want him to be deceased. That is great news in my book and or encyclopedia. And or men's fashion magazine. Okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna take this one. Luckfoot could be great because we've had terrible pills so far, but I think it's a little late in the game to rely on pills. So let's rely on re-rolling this and turning it into, you know, Brimstone or something. Oh. A little too little too late there. A little too little too late. Be good to me. I'm putting my life in your hands. Her life is in your hands, dude. Her life is in your hands. Yeah, okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. So, we're gonna play you, uh... That I a bit more. Didn't really make any sense. I tried to phrase something in a funny way and it just came out sounding like pure total nonsense. So here's the thing. Um, you don't want to get down to a half heart interval on these demon judgments because it turns the game into bullshit city and starts taking your spirit hearts even when you're invincible. For reasons that make no GD sense to me. Oh, okay, well. Okay, um, sure. I'll tell you what, I'll pick it up because it takes us nearly to full health. And it is a free version of the rabbits or luckfoot, I guess. Now we can get to a half heart interval. It is hard to be too salty about that floor, but um, I mean, the best thing we got on that floor was like 50 cents. We got a lot of uh, extra damage as a result of that. 
The second best thing we got was the ability to fly. Uh, we didn't quite get those, like, coup items that I thought we would. And again, yeah, we could have probably gone for broke a little bit more with Guppy if we had known that we would get Guppy's tail from the Demon Judgment, but how are we supposed to predict that? Or if we had known that Nine Lives would finally freaking show up, but it shows up a little bit too late for me to feel comfortable giving up the HP that I would have to give up to make it work. So, on this floor, as much as I... Ooh, yes, uh, don't mind if I do. As much as I... Oh, that's so beautiful. As much as I love to just speed run, well, go as fast as I can. Speed run's probably not the appropriate term for what it is that I do. Um, but as much as I love to go as fast as I can on these later floors, uh, we should do our due diligence and look around for an arcade. Even if we find the boss room right off the bat. Because it could allow us to get to 99 cents. There is still a one damage upgrade that we can milk from uh, our money equals power. And I think it would be stupid to not try for it, because we really, really need to. And this is contingent on there being HP on the ground. If there's not HP on the ground, whatever. Clear all my appointments. We've got a uh, gambling on Utero 2 happening. I don't care how long this run takes, as long as we do everything in our power to make it work. We can leave after this boss fight, recall. As long as we don't uh, trigger the, the rays that take us up to heaven, then we'll be stuck going to Shoal. There's worse punishments, but... Alright, homing poison bombs. This is uh, it's where you make your money. Piercing shots, also really useful for crowd control here, and still doing damage to Mom's heart, even when, uh... You would think that, uh, there would be enemies blocking them. Zambros, this is where we, uh, reach peak momentum. Hopefully no little Chad, or Chubb, sorry. Duke of Flies, fine by me. Poison's gonna take him out. Speaking of, uh, bombs, as I spoke about several moments ago. Not the cleanest segue of all time, but that's okay. We're good. Super easy. Take our money back and do a little bit more exploration. The other reason we should explore a little bit more, I don't know why I'm trying to make that wall into a door. Um, the other reason we, reason we should explore a little more is because we could find a library. And we already went through the trouble of making our libraries into double item rooms. So we probably should have even looked further on the last floor as well. We, it's possible we missed out on a library there that could have been very much worthwhile. Oh well. Now, that's a... Okay, this is a... This is not a room I enjoy. Anytime you have turrets, somebody up there hates you. You've done something wrong in a past life. Turrets and other enemies, especially. This is a room that I can get behind. We can fly. The creep doesn't do damage to us. Piercing shots allows us to do bullshit like that. Okay, well, we've hit all but three dead ends. If that were a golden chest, I would be super interested in opening it. I just realized, by the way, I should have talked about this earlier, but I totally re-rolled Guppy's tail when we have Skeleton Key. Now, I could try to spin that as, well, I don't think we'll get that many golden chests, and uh, we could have gotten something like Brimstone, that blah blah blah, no. Uh, it was a mistake. It might end up not being the objective wrong decision, but it was dumb to do. I should have just taken that, even if we weren't going to become Guppy, but... That's alright, you know, you, you make mistakes like that from time to time. We can live with it. And plus, you know, PhD's already given us a health upgrade, there's a tears upgrade with it as well. That's why I say, like, it's not necessarily an objective, uh, problem. It's probably on paper the wrong decision, but there is a small chance that it could work out for us. So this will take, like, half a spirit heart when I play it, which is absolute horse hockey, but whatever. At least we got extra invincibility out of it. So that takes us fully to 99 cents. I know we could gamble and, like, get spirit hearts. I can't be bothered, honestly. And I know that's going to annoy some people, and you're probably right to be annoyed. We do have the one-up, though. Um, so I'm not too worried about our survival. In the in the short term, at least. I'm going to take this just for raw HP. Uh, but, yeah, you might be right. I'll give you that. But at the same time, I need to preserve my mental health, and spending another 35 minutes gambling on that arcade is not going to preserve my mental health. But I apologize if you feel uh, differently. I know I value my mental health more than yours, I suppose. Which is not fair, but it's probably true for most people out there. So. I'm thinking secret room is going to be big. Oh, if this is small rock... I would be super stoked. Because we already have good damage. We have necessary speed, I'd say. Um, but to up our damage would be very nice, considering... You know, we've now got a little bit of a higher rate of fire. It just synergizes quite nicely. 
Above all else, I just like to find our boss room right away. Oh, come on, Peeper's Eye. Don't do me dirty like that. Well, we got a key, which I don't even know why I picked it up. Ooh, yeah, okay. Ooh, baby, I love your bite every night. Spider Bite is going to give us a uh, slow, which again is another item that synergizes fantastically with our newfound, slightly above average rate of fire. That's going to help us out a lot. I don't know what's going on outside. Kate's playing uh, Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. I assure you that we're not being uh, robbed and murdered. But someone in like late 19th century London is in for a pile of intrigue, is how it sounds to me. So Spider Bite is a big get for us. Let's be realistic. I'll probably end up losing the one-up. It's best to, to be realistic and plan, you know? Hope for the best, uh, plan for the worst. Ideally, you know, ideally though, we would, oh, we would end up using our one-up later than on Isaac. If we can avoid using it on Isaac, that's a big, uh, plus for us. So remote detonator is extra bombs. And, uh, well, we got very bomb-focused items in our library here. We'll end up rerolling both of those. Mr. Boom and a speed upgrade. So my speed is, as described uh, moments ago, merely adequate. But, at the same time, I can't get excited about taking a speed upgrade on, like, a library double item room. Uh, because we need it to be better than that. We can, we can make do with not impressive speed. And I think it's better to use this, uh, new, well, this reroll that we're gonna get pretty soon for something else. This has been a run that's a little bit like that, you know, decent items show up, do you pick them up or go for the reroll? I've been guilty of, of both on this run, and I'm just hoping that we got more than, uh, more right than wrong so we can actually get the, the victory here. So this isn't even our, uh, boss room down here, which is actually maybe a good thing. Because it means that we're going to be able to pretty easily get at least one more reroll after this one, if we want to. We may not need to. Uh, yeah, I guess I should have uh, gone to the curse room without actually picking up that spirit heart. But instead, I'm just going to keep the HP. This is a very t a surprisingly tactical run. One thing that I will say is I'm very glad I brought a full mug of coffee for this one, which is now uh, all gone. I've been taking periodic hits on the caffeine horse. This tarot card could be amazing. Uh, okay. Theoretically, maybe, practically, it gave us one key. And there's another speed upgrade. So, again, this is where I think to myself, what a wonderful world. No, I think to myself, uh, what's the worst case scenario of us re-rolling that speed upgrade? And the answer is, we don't get a speed upgrade. It's not like we're gonna re-roll it and it's gonna turn into freaking, you know, poison and end us. Um, and can I live with not having another speed upgrade? Yes. So I don't mind, uh, I, I don't pay much mind, I guess I should say, to the idea that, oh, you know, there's a passive item in there, you should pick it up right now, because you only have one more re-roll remaining and you might get two actives next time. A speed upgrade, at this point, is not that worth that much thought. In some situations, picking up that speed upgrade could be the difference between life and death. For example, if we didn't have a spider bite and we were going up against war, that's a practical situation where that might matter. For us in our current situation, I don't think it's very relevant. So we're going to use our last reroll. If we get two great things, beautiful. If we get one shitty thing, one great thing, beautiful. If we get two shitty things, we tried. That's all we can really do in Isaac is throw uh, everything we got at the wall and see what sticks, right? So we got Hourglass and Relic. I would be stupid to not take the Relic. Uh, but I think we'll... We'll go to like another couple of rooms here, because I feel like I'm actually stronger than the rooms we're going up against. But barely, so I don't think that's going to necessarily hold true for the chest. Uh, and... I know it might seem like I want to get one more reroll for the Hourglass. But... I think the proper way to do this, in my opinion at least, is to actually get one more reroll and immediately use it on the chest. Sure, maybe that means we don't get a reroll that we can use on the hourglass. And that might seem like I'm being lazy to you, but I'd rather have potentially an extra reroll on the chest as a result of bringing one down, which is worth four times as much as a reroll on the hourglass. Again, this is all, you know, bullshit theory and numbers, but uh, I think my reasoning is somewhat strong. Alright. How's this gonna work? 
Well, we do have a full suite of orbitals. Whenever I slow Isaac, which should be frequent, I'm going to try to drop in a poison bomb. But that does require us to get a little too close for comfort. But <laughs> it also allows us to do substantially more damage. This, this whole run is just fraught with, you know, asterisks and terms and conditions and, you know, this run may cause erectile dysfunction. If this run lasts for more than four hours, then, you know, contact your doctor. I'm starting to feel like it's lasting for more than four hours here. So, all right, this is going really well. Even though we've taken some damage, what was my goal? Pretty much just live through this fight without using the one-up. We take the one-up down to the next floor. I expect and, you know, with open arms, am okay with losing the one-up on the next floor. As long as we made it through this floor, which we did. Uh, let's go back and get enough HP. And if we come through on the, in the clutch on this round and end up winning... Might sound a little conceited, but I'm going to be very pleased with the way that I played this one. This is, uh, I'm looking at the, not the clock, but the, the data that's been used on this run in my recorder. And this is one of the longest runs, I think, possibly ever in, uh, in the Isaac series. And we never got anything that made us super overpowered. We've just strung together a lot of decent upgrades into a, uh, a package that's worth more than the sum of its parts. Now, let's check out our secret room before we uh, force ourselves to think about this one. This is fine. Let's fight Greed. Drop, uh, drop like a slot machine or something like that. So I can blow it up and get another item. Well, he dropped money. And a bomb. Fair enough. Okay, I think we take Rage. And we take Skinny Odd Mushroom for the DPS increase and the ability to build Rage faster and more shots so Spider Bite works better. Uh, we won't have permanent Polaroid invincibility, and we already have a full suite of orbitals. So I think in this case, even though I love it, we're going to reroll Sacrificial Dagger and Crack the Sky as a no-brainer reroll. We get Mom's Pad and uh, Monstro's Tooth. So we are, you know, this is not cocky, let's farm the chest territory. This is, we could lose pretty easily, let's um, do the best on the chest that we possibly can territory. And in that territory, Mom's Pad might actually be the right play when you have Nun's Habit. So I'm, I'm not 100% convinced that I'm actually going to reroll Mom's Pad. Now, if we want to reroll Monstro's Tooth, we have to reroll Mom's Pad unless we find another item pedestal. Uh, but I genuinely think that Mom's Pad could conceivably be the right play. Oh, no, why, why come to this room? Dead end, total waste. We better get some kind of sweet consumable here and or not take any damage or I'm gonna be mad. Now, there's the damage. We at least got our reroll, but that was gonna happen anyway. And death shouldn't be too bad to fight, because we basically give him no knockback. The horse, in particular, here. Um, we lost the spirit heart in the process, so I don't feel too great about it. Physically, I feel pretty good right now. Alright, well, we got some red hearts we could use in the future. It was probably still the wrong play, but whatever. Time will tell if I, if I uh, end up being very disappointed by that decision that I just made. So yes, I, uh, I got rid of Mom's Pad, and I picked up the Miter instead. My thinking being, that'll give me a couple of Spirit Hearts over the course of the floor. On paper, Mom's Pad used like four or five times is probably worth a lot more than a couple of Spirit Hearts, but this also gives us the potential to keep re-rolling the other pedestal, which I had to factor into my decision. So it's a tough one. And again, I think one of the beauty things about this run... Wow, that was the most Canadian sentence I've ever said. One of the beauty things. There goes my half heart interval. Um, one of the beautiful things about this run is the fact that, um, you know, you could play this very, very differently and possibly get better results or possibly have a substantially worse run. I just took one path that I, uh, that I was comfortable with. And I think it's going to end up working out here. We're going to fight the boss... We should be fine. Dead Sea Scroll. Dude, I mean, okay, hopefully it's a good one. Maybe it's Mom's Pad. Uh, but uh, if it's Kamikaze, that could end up being a pain in the ass. But we'll find out quickly. Here it is Monstro's Tooth. Well, it did no damage, I think. So we're not tanking, but our rate of fire is so high that it's. What we're doing is kind of indistinguishable from tanking. But our bombs are a big part of this. Yeah. You're co oh, it was Kamikaze? Are you kidding me? Now it stays as Kamikaze for the rest of the fight, I think. 
So if we wanted to be real sly, if we knew we were gonna die, we could stars card out of here. But we're actually gonna win instead, which I think is a preferable outcome if you ask me. Oh, now it's Book of Belial. I should have used it earlier, but anyway. Sure, uh, that was a really interesting run. I had a really fun time with that. I hope you guys did too. It's a long one, but uh, it's worth it. Hashtag your mom. In any case, if you enjoyed it, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.